Uh, for the exterior filter, it's just simply remove it. If it is just a normal daily, weekly deal that this thing gets dirty, just go to knock all the dust out of it, possibly run some water under it, let it dry, and stick it back on. But otherwise, the brand new one, you just drop it in. And that's it. Now we come to our oxygen concentrators. These do require maintenance once a year. In the annual maintenance kit, we have the compressor intake filter, a pressure relief valve, the exterior filter, and the compressor rebuild kit. And we're gonna go through everything. First, we remove the cover. There's three screws front and back. On the removal of the cover, there is a fan here with a cord that we wanna make sure we disconnect it properly. Just simply pull it off and set the cover somewhere else. Here we have the interior of the oxygen concentrator. The first two parts that we get to change out is the filter. This filter we want to change out really whenever it's needed. Recommended is every six months. If it's a relatively dusty and dry area that's prone to clogging up filters, change it out as needed. The pressure relief valve is located right on the compressor. It just unscrews right off. We'll add tape to our new one and put it on. Now we're gonna go ahead and rebuild the compressor. We'll start by gaining access to it. We're gonna loosen up the output fitting. After the output fitting's been removed, we'll remove the four screws from each head of the compressor. After the screws are removed, we'll just simply lift up the plates and set them aside for a moment. Now, in the kit, we've got the instruction manual that everyone throws away and all the parts that we're going to be re replacing. We'll start off with the cups for the compressor. We're going to go in and change out the two cups for the, that are underneath the plate, remove the sleeve and set it aside for now. And let's go ahead and remove the two screws that are anchoring the plate on. Now be very careful with these two as if you strip them, you're forced to pull apart half the compressor to pull off the entire arm. So try and be gentle and slow with these guys. You do get replacements in the kit, use those. With the two screws removed, we'll lift up the plate and the cup is underneath. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set it aside for now as if something horrible goes wrong later, we can possibly reuse it. But afterwards, let's go ahead and throw them away. We'll go ahead and pick up the sleeve again and clean off any extra debris that might be in the interior, alcohol, an abrasive pad, anything to clear off anything that might catch that cup. I'm usually not terribly concerned with staining or anything. Now for the assembly, to make everything a whole lot easier, We'll go ahead and preload everything before we put it into the compressor. So we'll put the cup underneath the plate and slide everything in to the sleeve. If you mess up and you don't feel everything catch right, you can just push it out the back and try it again. But we want to make sure that the sleeve uh, has nice contact with the cup and then the plate right behind it. Work it so it's about roughly halfway down or so. It doesn't have to be exact as long as everything is in there properly. With the assembly complete, we'll go ahead and put it back on the head. Keep in mind that there is a notch here where the reed hits, just for symmetry purposes. Let's go ahead and make sure it's pointed towards the ATF module, which is this guy, as similar to the other side. We'll go ahead and secure it with the two screws that came with the kit and make sure everything is a little past finger tight. 
for those of us that actually read the instruction manual, it does mention using Loctite on these threads. Let's go ahead and not worry about that as it will just make it harder to pull these guys out next time. Once every, the screws are tight, we'll slide the sleeve down until it's anchored and is flush. And then we'll go ahead and repeat it for the other head. And now we're going to change out the gaskets and the reeds and the top parts. First we have to pull off this middle plate to expose the underside. Uh, we'll start off by just removing all the old gaskets and set them aside on top and bottom. Now changing out these reeds, that is the crux. Uh, this is where you'll invent all the cuss words. So we remove this screw and that gives us our reeds on the front and back of that plate. We'll set these aside for now. Uh, go ahead and examine the plate for any uh, debris along these, these holes. If it need be, we'll go ahead and clean them off. This guy looks fine. And we will then start setting up our replacement reeds. The reeds go in opposite directions. And lastly, there is the plate underneath it. It is truncated slightly to allow movement of the reed on this side. Let's make sure we put that side against the reed as opposed to the flush side. Otherwise, it won't allow the reed to move and the compressor will never turn on. Once the screw is close to tight, we'll go ahead and arrange the reeds as we want them to be. Uh, best point of reference is on the underside. The gasket is going to fall along this way, so the reed can only point in this direction and it's underneath that plate. Let's go ahead and hold it down so that it's not going to move. And this reed over here is going to point in the opposite direction on top. And then we'll slowly tighten this top screw. You more than likely we'll need three hands for this as we're looking to anchor this reed here, this reed here, and then tighten the screw. If you have a second person there, it's just easiest to have them tighten the screw while you hold them down. Otherwise, you have to do it all by your lonesome. It's best to anchor it from underneath here and then on the back side with your thumb. <clears throat> Any small adjustments that need to be made, we'll just do it over and over again until everything is tight and immovable. Once we're satisfied that nothing's going to move all by themselves, We'll make sure that we can see no daylight through this hole. The reed is actually covering every bit of it. And we can see as it pokes up through here, as well as on this top side. Uh, the retaining square washer deal right here, make sure it is square and flush as opposed to uh, having the point in the center as it will tend to snap the reed as its bend point comes to that location. And uh, that's the hard part. After it, we joyfully just put on the gaskets. Make sure everything is seated properly. And let's go ahead and repeat it on the other side. I won't show you it because I'm glad I got one side done. After that is done, we'll reassemble it and put everything back the way we found it. Make sure everything lines up and we'll go ahead and put our screws back in. Long on the outside, short on the inside. As for the torque on this, just with anything else, until the wrench starts to turn on you slightly.